Hi everyone, it's Mia from Jeddle and today we're going to be breaking down how to answer an eight mark response in PDHP. My first tip is to clearly structure your response. I've provided an example of how you might like to structure your response on the screen, beginning with an introductory statement. For an eight marker, you're not required to write a full introduction, but it's important to write a statement where you hit all key aspects of the question. Following your introduction, you should have at least three points in an eight mark response, and in each of these points, including an example and thorough link to the question. For eight mark responses, you're usually gonna have a higher order verb, such as analyze or to what extent, which means you really have to link your examples and points back to the question to show how they function. In relation to this, detailed examples are important in eight mark responses to show your depth of understanding to the marker. So let's break down a practice question. Organisations suggest that governments should increase the funding for early intervention and prevention strategies for cancer. Analyse the effects this increased funding would have on Australia's future healthcare expenditure. Provide examples to support your answer. One thing to note here is that it's an analysed question which requires you to make a judgement on what you're saying. This means that you should be using language to indicate where you stand on the content covered. This is a bit of an overview of what my response looked like pieced together, but let's zoom in on some of the specific points. For my introductory statement, I said increased funding for early intervention and prevention strategies for cancer would significantly reduce healthcare expenditure in the future. As you can see, I've straight away provided a judgement by saying significantly reduce and hit all key aspects of the question, such as early intervention, prevention, cancer and healthcare expenditure. Currently, 80% of Australia's healthcare expenditure is spent on curative measures. Thus, intervention and prevention would enable long-term expenditure to be used elsewhere. For example, the cost of chemotherapy treatment far exceeds the cost of mobile cancer screening services. Thus, Early detection reduces healthcare expenditure on curative measures, which require high level funding, research and resource development. To begin my first point, I've led with a statistic, which clearly shows my analysis from the get-go. I followed on by saying how this intervention and prevention would affect long-term expenditure, which in this case is enabling the cost to be used elsewhere. I've also included a detailed example relating to cancer, which is what the question asked, of chemotherapy treatment versus the cost of mobile cancer screening. Increased funding for prevention and early intervention would also positively benefit Australia's future healthcare expenditure by relieving pressure on the healthcare system, workforce and infrastructure. For example, the highest level of recurrent expenditure is currently on public hospitals. Thus, prevention strategies for cancer, such as health promotion, e.g. National Skin Cancer Action Week and SunSmart Tradie Toolbox, will reduce expenditure on the healthcare system for the rising incidence of skin cancer, while relieving pressure for these services to cater for an increasing clientele. In this paragraph, you can see how I'm clearly establishing my point, following on with an example using the language, for example, to make it really clear, and then linking back to the question using language like thus. In this analysis, you can see that I've provided the why we should focus on intervention and prevention. In blue, I've said relieving pressure on the healthcare system, workforce and infrastructure, as well as providing some trends like rising incidence of skin cancer and increasing clientele. My example in this paragraph is focusing on the highest level of recurrent expenditure on public hospitals and then linking this back to the example of cancer by providing some health promotion initiatives such as SunSmart Tradie Toolbox. Increasing funding on early intervention and prevention also provides a more effective usage of Australia's healthcare expenditure. For example, since many cancers are caused by modifiable lifestyle factors, e.g. smoking causing lung cancer, resources may be used to focus on the health needs of priority population groups, such as those of low socioeconomic status. As you can see, this point is significantly shorter than my other two paragraphs, but I still have the same amount of depth of my analysis. So in blue, it says a more effective usage of Australia's healthcare expenditure relating to early intervention and prevention. My example is modifiable lifestyle factors, which I've linked to the specific case of lung cancer, and have even linked this to a priority population group, which is a key area of the syllabus under this topic. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out jettle.com for more resources.